Viewer discretion is advised. What if one day, whatever I've created in my mind can be realized? I want a friend, a companion, a protector, a guardian who will be by my side forever, or a monster that will scare the bad things away. I wonder how it'll look like, the boy thought to himself. And so he grabbed his crayon and a piece of paper and began working on his very own Frankenstein's monster. And now he found himself bedridden, at first in the hospital, and now somewhere with people dressed in lab coats, and they didn't look like doctors. On top of it all, he had lost his lower jaw and all his limbs. He had no idea how he got here. One thing for sure, he felt a strong bond with the red-skinned monster that had slaughtered everyone in the room, except for himself. The monster was all that he could remember now. It looked towards the man in the bed, who also looked at it confusingly, then walked towards a cadaver that was in the room. It ripped an opening on it and began taking out the organs. As it saw the light was fading away from the man's eyes, it quickly opened up the tear on the man's body and hastily replaced all his failing organs with the ones he had procured from the cadaver. Soon enough, the man regained his consciousness, and the monster smiled in appreciation for life. Hello everybody, I'm The Rubber. Today, we bring you a SCP Foundation Euclid Class Object SCP-3631. SCP-3631, also known as a man and his monster, is the collective designation for two humanoids, which are SCP-3631-1 and SCP-3631-2. 3631-1 is a nocturnal carnivore with red skin pigmentation. Outside of a mouth and several heat-sensing orifices, it lacks any discernible facial features. Despite this, 3631-1 demonstrates sight, smell, and hearing comparable with that of other large primates. 3631-2 is an adult man. All of 3631-2's limbs have been amputated, and the lower jaw and vocal cords have been removed. Additionally, a long incision had been made across the abdomen to allow access to the abdominal cavity. Analysis of scar tissue suggests this was likely inflicted by animal claws, though the precision of the wounds implies intent beyond simple defensive or predation behavior. Although he shows signs of consciousness, 3631-2 is capable of only weak response to stimuli, though this has improved since being taken into Foundation custody. 3631-1 displays aggressively protective behavior against perceived threats to 3631-2, having become significantly more aggressive since containment. It seems to be able to innately sense the medical condition of 3631-2 as demonstrated by its agitation and high-pitched vocalizations typically associated with distress during surgical operations on 3631-2. It will transport victims not used for sustenance to the vicinity of 3631-2. It will then begin extracting organs from the victim to replace diseased and or otherwise damaged organs in 3631-2. The transplanted organs resume functions upon attachment. However, transplanted organs quickly begin showing signs of atrophy and require replacement on an approximately monthly basis. Analysis indicates nearly all of 3631-2's organs have been replaced in this fashion, with only the central nervous system and sections of bone and muscle tissue retained. Tissues from 23 different hosts have been identified. Attempts to replace this process with standard medical care have yielded mixed results, although supplementing maintenance from 3631-1 with care from Foundation medical teams has improved 3631-2's condition considerably. It is not known at this time how 3631-2 consistently survived this process prior to containment given the poor quality of care and high risk of blood loss and infection. On the 18th of December, 2005, 3631-1 was discovered and captured in Ombre Road, Louisiana, after a string of disappearances were reported with multiple sightings of a hostile humanoid entity. One year later, it disappeared from the containment cell without any explanation. After several years of no sighting or evidence supporting the entity's existence, the Foundation redesignated it as neutralized. However, many years later, 3631-1 was rediscovered, 
along with 3631-2 after yet another string of disappearances consistent with those that led to the discovery of 3631-1. The Foundation sent out MTF Epsilon-6 to investigate, and during the investigation, 3631-2 was discovered in an abandoned barn. Several pillows, blankets, and crude objects resembling toys were found in the barn, along with multiple unidentifiable human remains. During efforts to extract 3631-2, the task force was intercepted by 3631-1 which was quickly subdued with minimal casualties. Back in the Foundation, Agent Shelley, who led the investigation into 3631, thought something was off about the relationship between 3631-2 and 3631-1. Why did it fight so hard for him, a man who has no limbs, no memories about anything except for the monster itself? Loyalty, perhaps? He looked at 3631-2, lying half-consciously in the bed, his life seemed to be hanging on by a thin thread. If he could speak, what story would he tell us? What does he know about the monster? The agent wondered. He moved closer to inspect and saw the long incision made on his abdomen to his eyes. It looked like it had been reopened many times, too many times. This is gnarly. What happened to him? I need tests done. Find out what you can about this man's scar. When the test came back, it was found out that all his organs had been replaced, which led to more questions. Who did this? And why? Soon enough, shortly after containment, 3631-2's health began to drop, as multiple organs were failing rapidly. He was immediately wheeled into the Foundation's surgery room, where a fresh cadaver was prepared for an organ transplant operation. When the head surgeon picked up a scalpel as operation was about to begin, 3631-1 broke containment and found its way into the surgery room. Everyone in the room was killed immediately in a rampage. As the security team was on its way to contain the situation, Agent Shelley watched the security camera feed in awe and horror as 3631-1 performed the surgery, albeit very crudely. It tore open 3631-2's incision scar with its bare hands. His body only twitched a little as his insides were violently exposed. It then plucked the failing organs out one by one and replaced them with the one from the cadaver. Goodness, how many times has this poor bastard gone through this? Moments later, the armed security team arrived at the scene and immediately fired tranquilizing rounds at 3631-1. It fell down as its body lost its strength. But before it was being carried out of the room, it sensed that 3631-2 was regaining health and let out a smile. The agent watched the feed intently. So the monster wants to keep the man alive and wouldn't let anyone else touch him. But what does it benefit from doing so? This question troubled him greatly. His gut feeling was telling him that something about the monster's smile shone something more than just relief, but he couldn't quite pinpoint what it was. To find out more about the monster, I have to find out more about the man himself first, Agent Shelley thought, and then led a raid on the man's residence. The search of the residence unearthed a number of crude drawings in an opened envelope, several of which depicted 3631-1 crudely. My God, did he create the monster? Along with the drawings was a small note, which read, Found these old drawings of yours. Thought you might like to see them again. Welcome home, love mom. So he created the monster somehow, but yet something still troubled him. What happened to his limbs? Was it the work of the monster? If so, why disfigure him so badly and then keep him alive? He then ordered to investigate 3631-2's medical records, which indicated that the man had been hospitalized due to a concussion after an automotive collision on which date corresponded with the day of the sudden disappearance of 3631-1 from its initial containment. The records also shown that he suffered from retrograde amnesia caused by the accident. Hospitalized and lost his memories after the accident, 3631-1 disappeared on the same day and no more cases of missing people. But it resumed after a year later. He looked at the note in the crude drawings of 3631-1 then it suddenly dawned on him. A year later, 
he came back to his home and saw the picture of his childhood's drawing. His mother must have sent him these pictures to remind him of his childhood. And it brought back 3631-1, which existence strongly depends on 3631-2's memory of it, the agent figured. This revelation began to dawn on him that perhaps it was not out of altruism nor a display of loyalty when 3631-1 performed the surgery to keep 3631-2 alive. It was a display of the monster's selfishness. It was merely sustaining the mind and body in which its entire existence was hung in the balance. And perhaps his limbs were also took away by 3631-1 to avoid him getting into random places to avoid accidents, which would probably cause another round of amnesia and took away his lower jaw and his ability to vocalize, just in case the man decides to call for help in exterminating it. Agent Shelley now recalled the smile on the monster's face. It was a smile of relief, of its own continual existence, not his creator's health. Remember to check out my new animation channel, The Rubber Talks, where I share my life story, thoughts, and opinions. Just click on the link in the description to enter the rubber's world. Before we end this video, we are proud to present these incredibly sweet pieces of fan art. A big thank you to all of you. You can now send us your fan art, and we will be more than happy to show off your best art piece in our next video. Check out our description below on how to submit. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Which SCP do you want to see in the next video and why it is interesting? Let us know in the comment below. We will draw your story and share it with the world. Don't forget to click like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. Please share it to your friends if you like this video. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.